Okay, Andy, would you uh, pray for us, please? I will. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to, to come and uh, to represent the people of the county, Lord. I, uh, on behalf of the commissioners, just thank you for the opportunity to, to lead the people um, with your blessing. Uh, Lord, there are many things going on in this world, and I know you have your hands in all of it, Lord, and uh, we pray for guidance and comfort and all of that. Lord, around the county, there are people that are struggling and need, he need help. Um, I just ask that um, they be cared for, and as neighbors, we look out for those. Uh, we thank you for it, and we pray. Amen. I'd like to ask also if everyone would uh, keep Tim Davis uh, in your thoughts and prayers. He's in a rollover accident, and he's got some broken bones and pretty pretty banged up, but after, after seeing the vehicle, he's very lucky to be with us. So anyway, you stand with me for the pledge, please. I'd like to call this Marshall County Fiscal Court October 1st, 2024 meeting to order. Our first guest, uh, I had requested uh, Mr. Paul King come in with PFGW regarding our, our courthouse roof. Um, it looks like uh, we do have asbestos up there and the um, cost on that will probably exceed our procurement amount of 40000 So I uh, just wanted to have him here if anyone had any questions and then we need to advertise that for bids. I, I know uh, Corey had sent that out, uh, the email out uh, to us to look over. And yes, sir. I, I don't, I can't, I don't think you can read that unless you're an engineer. I, I have no <laughs> idea what that, what that says. Okay. Did you read it? Did you I read it? I read it. I read it. Okay, so do you understand what we need to do? I said I read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank goodness it wasn't just me. Yeah. So essentially, instead of the abatement contractor, which in this case they're proposing IMAC from Calvert City, and as a change order. Let me to ask the you when you say they. They being mentor roofing. Okay. Your your general right. contractor roofing contractor okay. for the project. They're, they're the prime. Gotcha. So they're proposing to use the services of IMAC, um, I don't know, whatever they are, yeah. for the remediation work. And then they would work hand in hand with them uh, where IMAC would go in, do the remediation, remove the asbestos felts or adhesive mastics, mm -hmm. and Mentor would be right behind them, either work, doing their roofing work or sealing it back up to maintain weather tightness. Yeah. Um, and the two of them, they're gonna share a crane uh, and other uh, site amenities. The uh, abatement contractor has to provide their own dumpster, they have to provide their own man lifts, um, and then their own labor forces. But as we get into the fall weather, they won't be here every day. You know, it's, it's going to be weather forecasted permitted. So uh, that's why there's a real advantage to having a local contractor in that abatement side. Okay. Um, so uh, that that was the, who they <coughs> proposed. It turned out it was much more than we thought it was going to be, and I think there's more asbestos involved than what we originally thought it was going to be as well. They did uh, was 18 or 20 test sites, and we have that report that IMAC's other side, the testing side, uh, Audis, completed that report. Okay. So are you, are you suggesting that we do or don't have to deal with putting that out 
Well, the, the simplest would be to proceed with the change order with mentor yeah. for the work. Right. It will create a perhaps an awkward situation if we end up with a contractor that's say outside of local, outside of regional, right. because then they're trying to figure out when they're coming in, when they're going to perform their work, and, 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 and they're like supporting you, all that. And like you mentioned in here, the only other two truly, or the closest with, two, are in Illinois and. Uh, yeah, Romac, Greenville. <coughs> <coughs> so, yeah, and I'm actually. But one see. would assume that 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 cost would be more. You would think because of the travel alone. Yes. I mean, they're not yes. going to come here, stay here for. I mean, it's a how long of a process? You, you they're envisioning just a couple weeks, okay. two to three weeks. But still, two weeks transit. Back and forth. So. Yeah, and but that's not two to three weeks consistent. Yeah, they're going to start over here. I believe he said last week they're going to start on the south end, um, jump to the north, and then the center. Yeah, I think the entire roof project they were talking thirty to forty-five days. Now right. the variables there are like Paul mentioned the weather, but the the coordinated efforts with all of this is obviously crucial. So is this something we have? We don't. We don't have to put it out. I mean, we can go with mentor, and and they can use. Well, I might. It's it is a it is quote unquote a change order. Change orders happen all the time, and okay. you don't have to to bid those out. When I saw the first, uh, when I first looked at the number, I was thinking, okay, maybe this is something that we need to bid out. Then Paul responded after I sent that email out and saying, well, li listen, you've only got. Two, two uh, entities in the region who can do it. And if you expand your bid beyond, you know, the 100 mile radius, uh, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna get competitive bids anyway, because uh, like he just mentioned, the travel is gonna be written into that and it's, um, yeah. anybody who bids on it's gonna be higher. So is it it's something that you absolutely, yes, have to bid? No, I don't think so, because asbestos removal was written into the original bid. Yeah. It's like he said, it's just a little bit more than what we thought it was going to be. Uh, on that on that advice there, I say we just use, let them, use, let Minter use IMAC to, to do okay. it. And that way they're in, they work together already and it's okay. it'll go a lot smoother. Is that a motion? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Is there second. a second? Second. Any more discussion? So is that a, a also a, like an approval of a change order? order? Yeah. yeah. Is that what the bid, that one that needs to be yeah. approve the change order? Right. I make a motion we approve the change order of mineral roofing for the extra asbestos removal and use let them use their contractor they're already working with. Second again. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Paul. Okay. We'll Thanks, get her sir. Written up. I thank you all. Oh, by the way, the mechanical units are in stock. Got that notice yesterday. So, you, you, whatever downtime in whatever areas of the building will should be at a minimum. Very good. When that happens. Glad to know so. they're not in a shipping container. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't no. think I could yeah, take right. that right now. Roger sent a note. So are they west a, or east of here? They're in a warehouse. Uh, I think it would be in Louisville. Okay. So, uh, yes, we they can, can make get that them. happen. Martin, go get them. Yeah, yeah, I can go get them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, going to skip around a little bit so she can get out of here. Brittany has something real quick. This is going to be the single most short thing I have ever done up well, here. Well, you just ruined it. I <laughs> doubt <laughs> it. Yeah. No, I know. Sorry. Um, Harvard been. Baptist Church is wanting to host a pickleball event at the park. I've discussed this with all of you. I just need um, approval under the grounds policy for them to be able to post a banner about their pickleball event at the park. Okay, and that's, that's consistent with, we've done this with other people too. Yes, yep, we do yeah. this with the same thing so they can post it up to one week before the yeah. event and then it will have to be taken down um, after the event is over. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. Don't say any more. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next guest, Tammy Blackwell from Marsh County Library. How you doing today? Good. How are you guys?
nice. Good. Good, I gave good, good. Um, the commissioners and Judge Sprague's a packet of information with all the Bragg numbers. If anybody else would like some, I have them. Um, I'm not going to go over those numbers because I'm going to assume that you can read and understand those. Uh, the tax rate is really, you know, why we come once a year. We are once again accepting the compensating rate, which is 8.1 this year, down from last year's 8.6. Personal is also 8.1 this year, down from last year's 9.65. I do want to take a moment to talk about the compensating rate. So the compensating rate means this is the rate that is assumed we need to get the almost the exact same amount of money as last year. And we have been doing that since I became director in 2020. So that means we're getting in the same amount of money as we were in 2019. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the price of things have gone up like a lot, um, including toner, especially toner. Uh, and you may have noticed as you drive by the library, we are very busy. And unlike a for-profit business, more people through the door doesn't mean more money coming in. It actually means the exact opposite. We're going to keep taking the compensating right. That's, that's our plan. But it does mean we're having to be somewhat creative in what we're doing and making some hard decisions. One of those was, um, as of July 1, two of our services, due to their um, billing model, we have limited to only Marshall County residents. Um, that is Hoopla and our hotspots. We saved $1,700 that first month with Hoopla doing that. Um, we have really evaluated some of the services we've offered and if we do not feel like we're getting our money's worth out of them, we have discontinued them. Um, so that was Universal Class and News Bank. We did take part of that money we were saving with that and add it on New York Times Online. In the first month, it had 10 times the usage as the other two combined for the whole fiscal year. So that felt like a pretty smart move. People really love playing the crossword. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> and another thing that we have done is over the last two years, I have been really doing a deep dive into the traffic coming into the buildings and the usage when it's being used. And we have decreased our hours a little bit so that we can put our staff where they need to be and we're not having people sit in the empty buildings. Um, so that has allowed me to leave a couple of part-time positions unfulfilled and saving a little bit of money there. So we're being, if there's one thing a library staff is good at, it's being flexible and being creative. Um, and that's, that's what we're doing. We're still offering amazing services. We're probably gonna keep adding services and adding programs. It's just we have to be a little creative on how we do it. Um, I wanted to bring to your attention a few upcoming projects. The LibMD project, um, the folders I gave you guys are for that. The, there's a press release. This was funded with money from Bitten Wood Products and um, a grant from the Institute for Museum and Library Services. These kits, I worked with healthcare providers from Mercy Health and um, Baptist, and we're starting out with four different kinds of kits, one for those with high blood pressure, one for people with diabetes, one to reduce stress in adults, and one for adults whose children need help with emotional regulation. These we This was identified as the four most needed things in our community. This is very community driven. All the information in it is fact-based, evidence-based. Um, the blood pressure one comes with a blood pressure cuff. The idea behind these is to improve the overall health of Marshall County. And when we do that, something that's important to you guys, there's an economic impact. When you're taking care of your health, there's less days of work missed. You have a stronger workforce. So we're really excited about this project. I really think it can do a lot of good in the community. Secondly, our outdoor classroom. This is being paid for with the funds we got from selling the old building. 
It's going to have a little amphitheater, area for kids to run around. We can do outdoor programs there to be open to the public. Groups can use it for outside meetings. So, you know, like the master gardeners don't drag a tree into the library anymore. Um, we're really excited about it. And I am super excited because as I walked over here, they were cutting down a tree, which is the first act they have done on that lot. So that's getting started and we should be open in the spring. I think it's going to be a wonderful addition to the community and to the landscape of Bitten. Dolly Parton Imagination Library is no longer in the hands of the person it was before in Marshall County. And um, we were approached by the Dolly Parton people, not Dolly Parton herself, but I did get to go see her. Um, <laughs> and so, and I've worked with uh, Mayor Dotson, and we're working with the um, Joe Tom Halton Foundation, and basically what's going to happen is a new 501c3 is being developed. A lot of the funding is going to come from that Joe Tom Hall Foundation, and the library is going to do like the administrative side, which is really like clicking a button a couple of times a week. Um, not that big of a ask of us. So the Dolly Parton Imagination Library is going to be taken care of, and the library is very instrumental in getting that taken care of. And the final thing is we're working on our new strategic plan. So some of you will be getting calls from me asking for a meeting because I take strategic planning very seriously and I think it's really important to know where you see the community going and how the library can help us get there. So be looking for that phone call. Anybody have any questions about, because you know I can talk about the library all day. I really worked hard to get that short. <laughs> So the, the, this LibMD, um, I know you, you mentioned it was made possible um, through some funds that have come from Benton Wood Products. Did they reach out to you? They did. Okay. They actually reached out to me, asked me if I had any projects in need of financing, and they happened to do that the day after I got a no from a grant I would applied for with the National Health Institute for this and I was like actually yes I do um, so that was really wonderful of them because um, we we couldn't have done it without that do you have any other I mean you don't do you seek that out any or that I mean I sometimes like, I apply for grants yes yeah. like but I mean this th Is like this, the first this no time you've had mm -mm. an actual business from our community come to you yeah this i think this may be the first time that's well okay. you know every once in a while like lions club will come to us and ask if we have a yeah. rotary club but as a, far as a business no yeah, i think that's great i i, I think that was really awesome of them <laughs> you know uh benton wood products for giving back to the community like that i mean i, mm -hmm. I think that's great so that's and great. i would challenge any other um business out there that wants to to get involved to contact you yeah because we have lots of ideas so many ideas <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? okay well thank you so much keep thank up the good work all right does does anybody you want to pack it okay. anybody else need a packet i made a plea Next, we have Marshall County Resiliency Center. Okay, we'll move on. Maybe they'll show up in a minute. Uh, under old business, approve the minutes from the September. I need two separate motions for them, Jason. Two meetings. Uh, no, you can do it all in one. Okay. Approve the minutes from September 10th and 20th special called meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance 2024-08, speed limit, echo lane, second reading. Okay, we got a speed limit ordinance. Uh, Commonwealth Kentucky County of Marshall speed limit ordinance 2024-08. Uh, be it ordained by Fiscal Court of Marshall County, Commonwealth of Kentucky, in accordance with the provisions set in, set forth in Karis 189-395A, and upon 
and based upon the request of affected citizens and after review by the Marsh County Road Superintendent and the Marsh County Sheriff, the Marsh County Fiscal Court does hereby set the speed limit at 25 miles per hour for the following road in Marshall County, Kentucky, Echo Lane. First reading was September 10th, second reading October 1st. Okay, you need a motion to approve and adopt ordinance 2024-08, speed limit on Echo Lane. So move. Second. second. Motion, second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance 2024-09, admin code amendment, second reading. Okay. Uh, this is ordinance 2024-09, which is an amendment to ordinance number 2023-15, an ordinance relating to the admin code and amendment therefore of, whereas the county of Marshall adopted the administrative code by Marshall County on June 21st, 2016, whereas it was determined that certain provisions should be amended and or deleted uh, to the code. Now, therefore, be it ordained by fiscal court of Marshall County that the following amendments are made to the administrative code. So amending section 5.1 on definitions to remove uh, park ground supervisor from the definition of an exempt employee. Then amending a 5.3 D, I'm going to change it. Um, all of these numbers I'm getting ready to read are 3.4% increases from the pay of last year's administrative code. So I'll read this year's numbers. Uh, the senior department head, minimum 2712, midpoint 3474, maximum 4234. Uh, department head three, Minimum 2358, midpoint 3021, maximum 3686. Department head two, minimum 2149, midpoint 2686, maximum 3225. Department head one, minimum 2030, midpoint 2537, maximum 3044. Uh, supervisor two, 1909, midpoint 2389, maximum 2864. Supervisor one, uh, minimum 1780, midpoint 2171, maximum 2561. Professional staff, minimum 1619, midpoint 1975, maximum 2329. Staff four, minimum 1543, midpoint 1835, maximum 2129. Staff three, uh, minimum 1434, midpoint 1706, maximum 1980. Staff two, Minimum 1401, midpoint 1626, maximum 1843, and finally, staff one, minimum 1332, midpoint 1548, and the maximum of 1766. Um, amending section 5.12D to add in safety, uh, D, any employee injured while on duty will be covered under workers' comp and according to state and local laws. Any employee who's unable to work as a result of an uncovered compensable injury may elect to use available vacation and or sick leave to ensure that their regular take home pay amount is maintained. Here's the addition. However, employees on workers' compensation do not accrue vacation and or sick time and do not receive holiday pay. Uh, amending uh, section 5.22C holidays, adding employees may not use sick vacation or compens compensatory time on a paid holiday. Uh, amending section five, drug and, drug and alcohol testing, section 5C and section six, adding um, employee assistance program. This is a reflection of the employee assistance program that fiscal court is adopting starting January 1 of next year. Um, on the follow-up testing, uh, making sure that uh, Employees returning to work from an, a complete, successful completion of an employee assistance program um, for alcohol-related or alcohol rehab programs can be required, shall be required to go under a year of quarterly drug and alcohol testing. Amending Section 11, off-duty alcohol, drug use, and or volatile <coughs> substance intentional misuse and callback Section A. Uh, this is also uh, removing 
according uh, the generic according to substance abuse treatment policy and replacing it with through the employees assistance program uh, substance abuse treatment sections a1 and 2 uh, removing substance abuse treatment and calling it employee assistance program um, in part a adding that the county provides a level of care through its employee assistance program all employees shall be given information about the employee assistance program including phone numbers at the time or his or her orientation also adding that all employees of the county are strongly encouraged to voluntarily contact the employee assistance program if they believe they might have a problem with drug and alcohol abuse also adding phone numbers that are other sources of information such as Alcoholics Anonymous the American Council on Alcoholism and the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment the first reading of this ordinance was held on the 10th of September 2024 and the second reading to be held on this day the 1st of October 2024 to go in effect this day okay thank you need a motion to approve and adopt ordinance 2024-09 admin code amendment so moved for second second motion second any discussion all those in favor uh -huh. any opposed motion carries ordinance 2024-10 budget amendment second reading ordinance 2024-10 an ordinance relating to the annual budget and amendment thereof whereas the county of marshall has received additional funds now be it ordained by the fiscal court of marshall county that section one the annual budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 is amended to a increase the following revenue accounts federal grants $78,284, miscellaneous general fund, $2,400, cash balance July 1st, general fund, $17,500, cash balance July 1st, OTA fund, $320,000, state funded paving projects, $233,000, cash balance <clears throat> July 1, ABC, 2000, for a total increase revenue accounts of $653,184. B, increase the following expenditure accounts, general fund reserve, $65,389, OEM safety supplies and training, $2,295, general fund investments, $13,000, general fund reserve for transfer, $17,500, OTA reserve for transfer, $320,000, road fund equipment, $168,000, paving, $65,000, dare supplies, $2,000, for a total increase of expenditure accounts of $653,184. Section two, the amounts added to the revenue and expenditure accounts in section one are for governmental purposes, approved by the Marshall County Fiscal Court the 10th day of September, 2024, approved as to form and classification the 30th day of September, 2024. This amendment to the budget ordinance was adopted by the Marshall County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, on this, the first day of October, 2024. Thank you. We need a motion to approve and adopt Ordinance 2024-10, Budget Amendment. We approve and adopt. <coughs> second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item, Election Day holiday. We had tabled that from the last meeting. Uh, is there any discussion on that? Sent out. I didn't talk to you, and I don't. I can't find it. You sent out. You you looked to see how much that that would be. You know, Eight. Um. I, so the way that I came up with this was that I assumed that the JLE nine one one and the sheriff's departments would be the departments that had to continue to work on the holiday. Of course, there might be outside things like the road department might get called in for a problem or, or the OEM or, or something like that. But just within those three departments, yes, my estimate was $18,753 and 42 cents. My thoughts are leave it alone. We didn't budget for it at the time. And I will say my estimate that part of that, that 18, um, the SROs, which I believe would be working um, to, to do the election is 6788 of that, and that's at an overtime rate, we a holiday done, we rate. We done done something on that, though, hadn't we? No, uh, we did the SRO stuff. Yes, oh, and that's right. what I'm talking about, the yeah. SROs working yeah, the election. That, that, that somebody wanted, this is on wanted, top of that. Yes, yes, I knew that, but there's you brought Their that. rate would just be, yeah, higher because now it's in a holiday, so they'd be a double time and a half. Yes, instead of working, instead of, 
them working and it'd be regular time if it made, was made a holiday they would still work it would just be a holiday pay i got you they was going to be off before because school was correct off. yeah i would move to leave the holiday schedule as is second motion second any more discussion all those in favor Aye. any opposed motion carries okay let me skip that Okay, uh, advertise for employment or animal control and- What about the reschedule of the meeting? We're not, All we don't need to because- Okay, Yeah, and gotcha. then, yeah, the other thing is uh, not necessary either. Since we're, Absolutely, we I'll be working anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day. Just another day. Uh, I'll vote Saturday before. Advertise for employment. Uh, Animal Control and Parks Department. Mr. Bagel, you want to elaborate on that any? Okay, so Animal Control is, it's not a, it's, it's a part-time and it's a backup part-time. It's not an additional part-time. Uh, because we have a part-time employee in that spot and, that, and often they have a full-time job, they can't always be available for these strange and odd hours they're asked to do or certain weekends. So uh, Autumn requested, can we have a backup part-time? Might be a little bit difficult to fill because it is a spotty position, but we might get somebody and we do what we can to help her. And yeah. again, it's a, it's a backup. It's not an also. You need a motion for that. Uh, and the parks department, we have. Oh, the parks department. Uh, we had someone uh, resign, for, you know, need to resign, and so. Uh, Need a full-time position, and it would be at 1784 an hour. If it stood where we currently are, just need a motion to advertise for employment for so the moved. student. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, road department, Roy, you're up. Yes, we'd put out uh, some surplus items, one being a 2015 John Deere tractor. And uh, I would recommend that we accept the bid of $5,250.00 for that tractor. Also, we put out um, advertisement for a six foot by 31 tank car. Uh, and I would um, think that we need to refuse that, that bid at $250. Well, you want to tell us a little bit about the tractor? I mean, I know, but in case the others yeah, the tractor not that aware was, of the condition or whatever. Yeah, the tractor we surplus was, uh, like I said, it's 2015. Uh, it had a, a blowed motor, and we, we kept it at the road department for probably two to three summers, and we just robbed parts off of it. Uh, so we got our money's worth by keeping it and getting parts off of it, and, and I feel like this money here is a... Uh, it's a good price for that. Maybe we approve the uh, bid for the tractor and uh, decline the, the other bid. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, surplus Parks Department. Okay. So I've got a list of, of some items that the Parks Department would like to surplus. Uh, a 60 by 96 tilt trailer, a 48 by 96 trailer mesh screen bottom, a 60 inch pickup disc, 36 inch roller, a post hole auger, a 2001 gas golf cart, easy go, a tire and wheel changer, 22 sections of residential fence panel, and a Bostitch framing nailer. Motion to surplus. Motion surplus that, those items. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I just want to give a shout out to the road department and the parks department. If you haven't been out there yet, please take a drive out there and look at the area behind the Veterans Plaza. Uh, all that's been cleaned up. All the equipment's been moved back to a pad that they made back there hidden uh, behind the tree line. So. A much needed improvement there uh, 
visually and also we've added a parking area by doing that for the soccer field there. So very pleased with the results on that and those two department, departments working together. Um, did a great job, as always, and special projects uh, helped out also. Uh, I called Roy the other day to check and see how it was going, and he said, going, it's done. And I was like, oh, wow, well, that's that's great. So anyway. Uh, He's very, sneaky like that. I know, he is. <laughs> he, he, he is. But um, looks a whole lot better, and, you know, we just we're looking at that, and we're doing a lot out at the park. The new boat dock is, if it's not finished, it probably will be by the end of the week. Uh, that's looking really good, so we're uh, working hard on improvements out there in maintenance and uh, got special projects working with the Parks Department and the Road Department. Everybody's kind of involved, and in, uh, we're, we're focusing on the park right now, getting a lot done out there. So anyway, very proud of all of our staff. Next item, training incentive for the sheriff. Since he's not here, should we not vote for that? Yeah. Yeah, let's <laughs> we should decline that. We should table that. Yeah. <laughs> Two more weeks Until without he it. Until comes back. <laughs> I move we approve the tra um, training incentive for the sheriff and pay it. Just we usually pay those with payrolls. <laughs> yeah. And there's pay a payroll that um, we'll start that. today. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, 911 pay scale. Commissioner McGuire? Well, <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, as most of you know, uh, first response is my kind of area of what I focus on a lot. Um, we've reached long, try to make it as short as possible, but we've reached emergency shortages in, in staffing there. Uh, we are one, possibly two, at any point away from not being able to fulfill the 24-hour duties of 911. So in lieu of that, I have proposed a, a, an emergency pay scale to be, um, I would ask that it be placed into effect on November 1st. That would give us a chance to really focus on advertising uh, really focus on um, maybe moving, getting it to that next step. Uh, also, it would kind of help get some experienced dispatchers, possibly from other agencies, to move into uh, to come to Marshall County um, because we've we've got some some good dispatchers that are there, um, but we we lack that experience. I think we've got one with more than 10 years experience. Uh, and a dispatch center really needs to be balanced a little bit better than that. Most people came in post-2019, and we all know kind of what happened with 911 since 2019. So uh, that would be my goal with this. Uh, you know, Erica, I worked with her a little bit on the, the financial side of it. Uh, I believe it's going to cost, if we, if we run it starting November 1st, the cost could for the rest of the year will be around $65,000, $64,200. Um, I'd had some previous discussions with uh, the judge about some of the rearranging he was going to do in other departments, and uh, the, the funding will be there uh, to cover it if you also choose to enact the pay scale. Um, I would make one tweak to the pay scale since you all have seen it. Um, the part-time, if you all see, the, with the less than three years experience, I would move that to 2250 an hour instead of where it's at on the, the pay scale at 24. But I, with that, I would move to uh, implement that, this pay scale effective November 1st, and that it, this pay scale will supersede any uh, COLA for the next for the next um, negotiations in the budget for July of next year, this this would supersede any any cola for uh, for this department. Second, motion to se and uh, second <clears throat> uh, discussion. I've got a few things I would like to add. First of all, uh, I want to thank Mr. Pagel. He's been working up there a lot, helping out. Uh, appreciate that. He's always here for whatever needs to be done.
and very much appreciate him jumping in. Obviously working him hard. He looks like he's lost like 40 pounds. <laughs> we hang out together at Snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you and the judge? You and me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I want to I wanna thank him. It's just like whatever needs to be done, he's always there for me, for the county, and I really appreciate him. Uh, you know, I'm hoping if this passes, this puts us in a position where we can be choosy with our hiring process and have some good qualified uh, seat-ready candidates. It's very important um, to the center, it's important to us managing everything to get good solid employees that are going to want to stay and not looking the day they start because the pay is better somewhere else. Um, I guess that's yeah, with that said, yeah, even with the increases that we did, you know, they were still being able to go anywhere else and make a minimum of $2 an hour more than what they were making at, at our place. And it just, it just didn't make sense for them to stay, even if they wanted to. So we we got to be competitive as a small business owner myself. You know, you can't, you've got to pay what the market is paying if you want to keep good people. A yeah. uh, couple of things, just to just to clarify, um, because I think I think you probably want that in there for the whether it goes in the admin. I don't know if this goes in the admin code or this is just a, a document by 911 but years of service yes. equals experience in Kentucky in yes. in a 911 center that would be paramount Kentucky. because Kentucky doesn't recognize other states yeah. certification so it's not it's not experience specific to us but experience in yeah. other 911 yeah you'd have to in. be certified to get on the 2 3 5 10 year pay scales you would have to be certified in Kentucky. Now and we'll use your start date because people go to the academy at different times, but um, whatever your, you know, your personnel file says you started, uh, we can use those years of experience, but yeah, they have to be Kentucky years and it has to be a Kentucky certification. Uh, we just hired one in Murray that has 20 plus years in Tennessee, just right below the line, and he's gonna have to go to the academy. So his certification does not roll over. Okay. Um, so I think at least that needs to be within whatever document we have. We need to have that at least clear so that they know it and we know it. Right. Um, does that need to be part of the motion? Yeah. Well, let's wait. Let's time. Let me. Let me ask you this, um, because you have we have like four different uh, pay scales within the first three years. Is there any way to, do you see, get, uh, that's what's your, kind what's of your thought process yeah, to on get that? Get them, that? That's where we are lacking the most in, in That experience level, is that yeah, what you're? Well, to get them to stay past that three years, you want to get them up quicker, don't make them wait five or eight years before they're making a competitive wage. Okay. And get them up and then once they're, you know, obviously it slows down after the three year mark. All right. It also seems to be the attrition. With yeah. Many dispatchers. That's a good point too. The, that two to three year period, is that what you're saying? A lot of investment early in them and then leaving after three. Two or three years they go do something else. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that makes sense. Um, the other thing um, I just want to just clarify is, if I remember right, we did pass something, whether it be in the, I think it was in the admin code, I think, uh, specific to the academy, right, where if they don't they have to stay a certain period of time or I believe there's a they contract. lose that. There's a contract on file that they would have to pay back or the agency that they go to has would to reimburse us. Yeah. So we have, they sign when, when they on board with us or they 
sign on to, to work with us a three-year contract, which was amended, what, two, three months ago? Yeah, it was pretty recent. It can be recent. prorated. It's previously payback everything. And when we talk about expenses, there are certain expenses related to phase testing. Those aren't real high expenses, but once they get into the academy, that's four weeks. They are not with us. And so the academy doesn't cost money into itself, but, but we are paying their wages while they're at the academy. Meanwhile, people back home are scrambling to cover, and that can mean overtime. And so, you know, it's a, that's where the cost starts to come in. So, and within a couple months ago, you voted to prorate that amount in spirit of the, the FTC. Was it the FTC? Yeah, yeah we had to change that a, a little while back because the Federal Trade Commission issued a new regulation that basically wiped out all non-compete agreements. Public, oh, private, yeah. across the board, except for that's right. Except for just a one, one or two, maybe limited exceptions. So we had to uh, tailor the agreement to come into the spirit of that new rule. And in the oh, spirit man. of this is to attract that three to five to ten year dispatcher, as opposed to you know, don't want it to sound bad. Well, you don't want to hire a new one if you can help it. You want to be able to to hire someone that's got five years experience that you can plug them in, train them for a week on whatever CAD they may be used to and cut them loose mm -hmm. instead of losing them for, you know, months. I think the the other plus to this that I don't know, I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but uh, financially anyway, is uh, at the staffing level that we're at right now, two things. Financially, it doesn't make sense because of the overtime. We're ending up paying more than what this pay scale actually is because of overtime. Two, uh, overtime is fine. Overtime is not meant to be um, something that is <laughs> – extended yeah. for two I mean yeah, we have officers. we cannot expect in a job that that is that stressful right. to be working 50 70 something. hours yeah. a, whatever it is you know yeah. I mean a, a pay we're on, we're on pace to be over budget a hundred thousand in overtime and just in overtime we budgeted 50,000 for the year and we are it was at 25 after two months yeah. Not only, but like you say, it's it's not just about the money. It's about the mental health aspect when they're averaging 50 hours a month in overtime. That, you that, somebody on the other end about to fall asleep. That's not sustainable. Do, can't think. Yeah. We need to be in at my the. Opinion, uh, it's not sustainable. We need to be at the high school uh, uh, job fair the next <laughs> time. Yeah. Uh, to recruit folks out of. Last time too. we went to one, we had a sign that said you could start out at thirteen dollars and eighty-five cents. Well, <laughs> yeah. and I'm they hoping, kept looking. <laughs> so I'm hoping looking. we get some applications for five, ten years' yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. So that's a hopes here. And um, and I think you know, like Commissioner Barrett mentioned, you know, you do have to be competitive uh and i and i do hope i mean money is not always everything uh but it certainly helps it helps and, and and we're trying to stabilize everything we're trying to stabilize morale as well as you know get get folks there and, and we got to do everything we can on our end because it's it's not an agency that you can do without you know it's a certainly a mission critical agency that Ten minutes without them, and you're going to know it. Anybody else? Do I need to clarify the motion as far as the to be oh. to be Kentucky? I will tell you, I will. I will say one other thing. Um, just logistically, within uh, the admin code, are you going to have to? You just basically <laughs> going to? Take whatever the pay rate is and fit them into that. I mean, is there anything that we have to do as, as it relates to the admin code? What do you think on that? I mean, it's, it's, right, I would say the road department has its uh, incremental.
supplemental CDL rates and that's outside that's not in that the admin code. Uh, so be the there same. are certain sub sub policies, if you want to call it that, within the department. If it, if it seems like we need to put it in there, we can amend it into there. I mean, if it will fit under the current scheme, that's that's great. But if they if they have always if we've always treated them as falling within the admin code, and they this new scale does not fit within the admin code, then I think we probably need to address it in the admin code, some form or fashion. We can do this now, but it definitely needs to be something that we right look at right. Sorry to add more. No, I mean, that, we, that was going to have to be addressed one at one time or another. So Look at the definition of some of these, and I'd have to really think about it. We could yeah. put our heads together, but it's awfully close already. Okay. okay. So you amended for Kentucky, I'll amend it to, to Kentucky make sure that you yeah, only Kentucky experience only. Okay. I need to do another second. Might as well. Yeah, second. Second. Any more discussion? Uh, before we vote on this, I want to thank Commissioner McGuire for taking the time and to do the research and put all this together. Uh, it's much needed on, on my end. I've been very stressed about the employee level there and unable to uh, get more people in. So uh, I appreciate your efforts on that. And Absolutely. and you would you would also agree that uh, when we talk to our counterparts in other counties, you talk to your counterparts in other counties. This is not um, something that it's not unique. No, it's, it's not. a tough job. That's the thing. no. Nope. It is yeah, a tough. A lot of people don't want to do it. It's yeah, not. <clears throat> for sure. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Transfers. Need a motion for the. Read that first. <laughs> the appropriation <laughs> transfer. <I'm reading laughs> transfer. Moving right on here. The appropriation transfers are on the drive. The first uh, transfer is from our investments <clears throat> for our shield and launcher replacement. Um, <clears throat> then we have our uh, uh, transfer that is related to the budget amendment we, we just passed. Um, to move one of those um, lines back into where we used money to pay for the tractors um, towards the beginning of the year. And the last few lines are for some odd and ends, and they're out of our reserves. Um, I, I'm not going to add a, a transfer for what we just decided yet. I'll wait for the next meeting. Maybe we'll have ironed out who's coming at what amounts, and we'll have a little bit more precise of a transfer. Um, so I'll wait to add that one. And then there is a transient tax transfer for $33,593.25. We approve the appropriation transfer. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> There's one bank transfer from the occupational tax fund to the general fund, and it is to move the money that we just you just approved me to move the budget for. This is to move the actual dollars for. Move we approve the uh, bank transfer. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Any motion to pay the bills? Pay the bills. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion to go into executive session to discuss litigation and personnel per KRS 61810-1C and F. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Okay, we'll call the meeting back to order. Just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.